spinal cord injury. A spinal cord injury occurs when there is damage to the spinal cord, which is a long, thin, tube-like bundle of nerve fibers that runs from the brainstem to the lower back. The spinal cord is a crucial part of the central nervous system that transmits signals between the brain and the rest of the body. It can result from trauma, such as a car accident, fall, or sports injury, or from diseases or medical conditions such as tumors or infections. The severity of the injury depends on the extent and location of the damage to the spinal cord. Spinal cord injury can lead to loss of sensation, movement, and function below the level of injury. In some cases, it can be life-threatening and require immediate medical attention. Rehabilitation and medical interventions can help manage symptoms and improve quality of life for individuals. What are the types of spinal cord injury? There are two main types of spinal cord injury, complete and incomplete. A complete spinal cord injury occurs when there is a total loss of sensation and motor function below the level of the injury. This means that there is a complete severing of the nerve fibers in the spinal cord, and the person may experience paralysis or loss of movement and sensation in the limbs, trunk, and pelvic organs. An incomplete spinal cord injury occurs when there is only partial damage to the spinal cord, and some sensation or motor function remains below the level of the injury. The extent of the damage in the location of the injury will determine the specific symptoms and degree of impairment. Within these two main categories, there are several specific types of spinal cord injury, including 1. Tetraplegia also known as quadriplegia, injuries that affect the cervical, neck, region of the spinal cord, resulting in loss of function and sensation in all four limbs and potentially the trunk and pelvic organs. 2. Paraplegia. Injuries that affect the thoracic, lumbar, or sacral regions of the spinal cord, resulting in loss of function and sensation in the lower limbs, but not in the arms. 3. Central cord syndrome. A type of incomplete spinal cord injury that affects the center of the spinal cord and can result in paralysis or weakness in the arms, but not the legs. 4. brown seckard syndrome. A type of incomplete spinal cord injury that affects one side of the spinal cord, resulting in weakness or paralysis on one side of the body and loss of sensation on the other side. 5. Anterior cord syndrome. A type of spinal cord injury that affects the front of the spinal cord, resulting in loss of sensation and movement below the level of the injury, but preserved sensation and movement in other parts of the body. What are the causes of spinal cord injury? Spinal cord injuries can be caused by a variety of factors, including Trauma. The most common cause of SI is trauma, which can result from a variety of accidents such as car crashes, falls, sports injuries, and acts of violence. Disease OR infection. Certain medical conditions such as tumors, infections, and degenerative diseases can damage the spinal cord and cause SI. Genetics. Some rare genetic disorders can cause spinal cord abnormalities that can lead to SI. Vascular disorders. Conditions that affect blood flow to the spinal cord, such as arteriovenous malformations or spinal cord infarction, can cause SI. Surgical complications. In some cases, spinal cord injuries can occur during surgery, particularly in procedures involving the spine or spinal cord. Electric shock. High voltage electric shock can cause spinal cord injuries, as can exposure to toxic chemicals or radiation. Non-traumatic causes. In rare cases, SI can occur without any obvious physical trauma, such as in cases of spinal cord strokes or transverse myelitis. Many cases of SI are preventable through safety measures such as wearing seat belts, using protective equipment during sports activities, and taking precautions to avoid falls or other accidents. What tests are used to determine the extent of injury? Several tests are used to determine the extent and severity of a spinal cord injury. These tests may be conducted during the initial evaluation of the injury, as well as in follow-up assessments to monitor changes in function over time. Some of the common tests used to evaluate SI include 1. Neurological examination. A physical examination that assesses muscle strength, sensation, reflexes, and other neurological functions to determine the location and severity of the injury. 2. X-rays. These imaging tests can help identify fractures or dislocations of the vertebrae that may be compressing or damaging the spinal cord. 3. Computed tomography or CT scan. A CT scan can provide detailed images of the spinal cord and surrounding tissues, which can help identify the extent of the injury and any structural abnormalities. 4. Magnetic resonance imaging or MRI. 
An MRI uses powerful magnets and radio waves to produce detailed images of the spinal cord, which can help identify the location and severity of the injury. 5. Electromyography or EMG. An EMG test measures electrical activity in muscles and nerves, which can help identify nerve damage or dysfunction. 6. Somatosensory evoked potential or SSEP test. An SSEP test measures the electrical activity of sensory nerves in response to stimulation, which can help identify the location and severity of the injury. 7. Eurodynamic testing. A series of tests that assess the function of the urinary system, which can help identify problems with bladder control that may result from psi. These tests are typically performed by a neurologist, neurosurgeon, or other healthcare professional with expertise in spinal cord injury. They can help guide treatment decisions and monitor changes in function over time. How is a spinal cord injury treated? The treatment of spinal cord injury depends on the severity and location of the injury. Spinal cord injury is a medical emergency and requires immediate medical attention to minimize further damage to the spinal cord and other organs. In the acute phase, the goal of treatment is to stabilize the spine and prevent further injury. This may involve immobilization of the spine with braces or traction, and possibly surgery to realign the spine or remove any foreign objects that may be causing damage. After the acute phase, treatment focuses on rehabilitation and management of symptoms. This may involve a combination of physical therapy, occupational therapy, and other types of rehabilitation to help regain movement, strength, and function. Medications may also be prescribed to manage pain, spasticity, and other symptoms. In some cases, assistive devices such as wheelchairs or walkers may be necessary to help with mobility. Other interventions such as bladder and bowel management strategies, sexual counseling, and psychological support may also be part of the treatment plan. Research is ongoing to develop new treatments for spinal cord injury, including stem cell therapy, neuroprotective drugs, and electrical stimulation to promote nerve regeneration. However, these treatments are still in the experimental stage and are not yet widely available. It is important for individuals with spinal cord injury to work closely with their healthcare team to develop a personalized treatment plan and receive ongoing support and care.